Hello, my name is Damian Russell. I'm a branch owner in the ERS system or Elite Realty Services system. My wife and I own the Elk Grove branch and we have a, an affiliation with a few other branches in our downline or on our team from team members as branch owners. I'm going to explain very briefly, it's going to be a short video, I, I promise you, uh, our compensation system but not the, entire, the entirety of it. I'm just going to explain um, the portion that pertains to branch owners. Um, like myself, for prospective branch owners who I hope are viewing this video. Um, this is just going to be a short on the, uh, uh, as an explanation on how branch owners get paid, what that looks like. Um, you may be a broker and you're going to want to know, well, what is the difference? Uh, hopefully we'll point out some of the attributes or pluses or, of being uh, an owner with ERS as opposed to being an owner with another franchise system or just out there as an independent on your own. So I'm going to start um, with a brief explanation. I'm going to use, uh, you may or may not know, uh, ERS, Elite Realty Services. Um, we also have another use of that acronym. We call it our Early Retirement System. Um, we do more than just real estate. We do real estate, uh, both commercial and residential. We do mortgage, uh, again, both residential and commercial. We specialize in reverse mortgage as well. Uh, we also do insurance, life, health, and PNC, as well as commercial finance, and we do home services. Uh, right now, uh, we have a very strong focus on solar. We sell solar uh, both for home and business or commercial assets. So we do a lot, and I'd like to say just from right off the, right off the, uh, the bat here from the get-go that um, what we do in the compensation system that I'm going to explain on this whiteboard in a moment, um, it applies across the board. It is a uh, gross company income or gross commission income um, filter or filtration system. And please understand that regardless of the industry that the gross compensation came from, whether it be from title or some other means, um, that it applies in this filter. I'm going to today speak from a real estate perspective because I think that will probably most uh, closely reflect um, viewers uh, understanding or be able to relate better with the, the viewers we have because I think it's very simple to explain it from a real estate perspective. So I'm going to start uh, by pointing out that what we're talking about is GCI, gross commission income. If you do or do not understand the real estate industry or how this works, understand that what comes in as a result of an agent closing a deal is called gross commission income gross commission income. So the way to determine the percentage that the company gets or the agent gets or the representative or sales associate, what have you, uh, gets as a result of that dollar coming in is based on their contract, whether it be their comp level or their retention contract, speaking for real estate. So that's going to be what determines that. So we're going to use round numbers. I love numbers and I'm an analytical uh, nut, as they call it, but I'm not a mathematician, so I'm going to use round numbers to keep this nice and simple, and hopefully you all be able to follow. So we're going to use a $10,000 gross commission as an example, and we're going to say Agent Bob is our practitioner, and it was a real estate deal, and Agent Bob, we're going to say, is on a 70% retention contract. So what that means for the uninitiated is that uh, Agent Bob, in this case, with that $10,000 GCI, would be getting a gross agent dollar, abbreviated by AD, a gross agent dollar of $7,000. So conversely, what that means is that the company dollar, abbreviated by CD, for this hypothetical, is going to be $3,000. I hope you can see that. So $3,000 as company dollar, $7,000 as agent dollar as a result of the $10,000 GCI that came in on a real estate deal closed by agent Bob who was on a 70% retention contract. So I'll start here by explaining that at ERS we do not charge our, our agents a lot of fees. We don't charge them really any fees. Uh, we charge a 2% compliance and audit fee, which actually were required by law to, to 
to charge. Uh, I can explain that briefly by saying that it's essentially workers' comp. That's why we work in that workers' comp mandate. The second charge is $132. That is your E&O, the agent's E&O premium. That's, those are the two reductions. That's it. The 2% comp fee is really nominal, folks. It's an agent's not a problem because it's, it's literally $20 per thousand. So on this deal, hypothetically, where the agent got seven thousand dollars in gross commission, two percent of that, it's twenty dollars per thousand. It's one hundred twenty bucks. One hundred forty dollars. I'm so sorry. So and then there's the E&O, and that's it. The rest is Agent Bob's take home, and he's off. A lot of other agencies will charge desk fees, tech fees, fax fees, copier fees, phone fees, what have you. We do not do that. But, and this is, and I'll stop right there, I'll stop right there to say that up until now, with the, the exception of our low fees, this is a traditional real estate model. Any other company uh, or brand uh, or franchise charges, or, or I'm sorry, not charges, but operates and conducts their compensation to this point exactly the same. The agent's on a contract, they get their retention portion, the company gets the other split. That's how it works. Now I'm going to get, I'm going to change colors here. That's, I'm going to get to where ERS takes over and becomes unique. So where the uniqueness of ERS begins to come to light is that in our branch ownership system, we don't charge the fees, but we understand that the agents are in the office using resources. They're, they're causing overhead to be expended or expense to be expended in, in, the, in the guise of overhead. Um, they're certainly in the office using the copiers and machines or taking a workstation. They may be using the phone lines or, or what have you. They're, they're not draining resources, but this is a way that in our comp plan, we reimburse the branch owners without taking it from the agent. We take it from the company dollar. 20% right off the top goes to the branch owner so in this hypothetical, that would be $600. Branch money right off the top of gross company dollar. Gross company dollar right off the top. There's a 20% carve out for the branch owner to reimburse you to help go toward your overhead and expenses. What we have left then is $2,400. And that is our adjusted gross company dollar. So the adjusted gross company dollar therefore becomes $2,400, which we split in half. $1,200, $1,200. I'll start with the $1,200 here on the right. The other thing that makes us unique is that we offer everyone in our company, all agents, all associates, all representatives, the ability to build their own team without owning a branch. Essentially build their business within our business. Build your office within our, within our office, uh, as we like to call it. So this $1,200 is how we compensate that portion or component of our compensation. That's how we, uh, those are the dollars that are allocated. That's how we address or fund or finance, if you will, um, that portion of our comp plan. This $1,200 carve out in this example um, comes over to what I will in, uh, initialize as the bonus pool. That's where our compensation or override system, residual income system for our builders and agents is, is paid from. So in this case, in this instance, $1,200 would have traveled over to the bonus pool. And depending on where you are in our hierarchy, um, how big your team is, how much you've helped us grow, um, you're going to be compensated a percentage, your just percentage, of that $1,200. It starts at 20%, folks, goes up to 80%, which is the, the, the highest um, position in our branch, or I'm sorry, our builder pool or bonus pool override system. So understand that $1,200 comes down uh, from the adjusted gross and goes over to the bonus pool. So the second $1,200 here is split in half again. So this $1,200 over here is also divided in half with this portion, or $600 for this example, going to the branch owner, and that is branch profit, $600.
I hope you can see this. I hope it's coming through okay on the video. Uh, this $600 goes to our corporation or corporate office. What our founder and broker, CEO, Mr. Robert Doe, likes to call a 50-50 partnership with the branch owner. Um, and that's where that comes from. 50% of the remaining gross income on company dollar sign is split 50-50 between the corporation and the branch owner. But let's look at that because I always say Mr. Doe is extremely modest because it's not really a 50-50 partnership if you think about it. And like I said, I'm a numbers guy. So you got 20% as a branch owner off the top. You got $600, which is 20% in branch profit. The corporation got six, $600, the same $600. That's 20%. So it's not a 50-50 partnership. It's actually an 80-20 partnership that Mr. Doe is offering you as a branch owner to come into our system, take our business model, take a defined, execute, and establish blueprint, open your office, and get off and running and build your branch. An 80-20 partnership. I think that's a phenomenal offer. That's why my wife and I jumped on it four years ago. So I'm going to erase this and break it down, but I'm going to uh, point out a couple of things here briefly. Just in terms of percentages, you can use this filter, as I said, across the different industries we're in. But what it amounts to is that when gross dollar comes in, it's split between the agent or the sales associate based on their contract or their their commission level or what have you, the company dollar travels over here and is subject regardless of what it is to this filter. On our real estate side, we have 100% agents. We have agents who have 100% contract and they play a fat fee, I'm sorry, a flat fee uh, when they close a transaction. Um, in most cases, we have two levels, but in most cases it's $595. So that means that the agent would have gotten all of this 10000 but the 595 flat fee. That 595 flat fee would have traveled to this side and gone through the exact same filtration system. Obviously the numbers would be a lot lower in that case, but still the very same filtration no, no matter or regardless of what the dollar amount that comes over for gross company dollar. So what it looks like mathematically or percentage wise is 40% to the branch owner. I know this is getting a little messy. As I said, I'm going to clear it and, and begin anew just here in a moment to, to, to um, very briefly explain the next component. But uh, what it amounts to is 40% here to the branch owner, 20% to corporate, and 40% to the bonus pool. So 40% to the branch owner, 40% 40, 40 to the bonus pool, and 20% to corporate. And you may be thinking, well, that's a lot for the corporation. You may be familiar with other franchise systems. Uh, I have a, a, a particular familiarity with Century 21. It's where I came from. So I understand franchising. I understand how that works in the real estate industry and how it works as a model with most franchise companies like Century 21, excuse me, or Coldwell Banker. Um, and what it typically looks like is that it's 8 to 12 percent depending on the company. Um, I can speak for Century 21 directly to say that uh, there was the, the branch owner uh, paid a 6 percent franchise fee uh, plus a 2 percent NAF or National Advertising Fund fee. So uh, that's like if you're sitting at home and you're watching television and you see a Century 21 commercial on TV or Coldwell Bank or whatever, that's what your 2 percent goes to. It's a uh, pooled fund that goes to cover national advertising for the brand. So you're getting that and typically as I said it's going to range depending on which brand you're talking about but it's about 8 to 12 percent. So what you're thinking is in the ERS system it's 20 percent. So what are you getting for the extra 8 to 12 percent um, that you're paying on the ERS side as an owner? Um, and it's pretty much a no-brainer. Uh, in the franchise system, traditional model, as a branch owner, you're a broker. Uh, you're a broker owner, in fact, uh, which means that you are responsible and liable at all levels um, in that regard. So the buck stops with you. You're the broker. In the ERS system, Robert Doe is the broker. Um, ERS corporate handles and shelters the liability, shoulders, I'm sorry, the liability uh, that goes with being the broker owner. Your responsibility, therefore, as a branch owner, mine, is to maintain your facility, your premises, pay your bills, uh, build your team, 
and build your branch. Uh, provide support and training and, and be that shoulder for your agents if need be, but um, you're really running your ship while the liability of doing so rests at corporate. That's what you're getting. That's why it's 20% and that's why it's a heck of a deal and an 80-20 split. So it's like if uh, Mr. Doe came to you and said, hey, I want to partner with you in a new area, a new city perhaps, and I want to open a branch and I want to do so with you as my partner. Um, I'll, I will, you put up the, the, the funds to open your branch, you sign your lease, you're liable in that regard, but I will give you the system, the support, accounting, auditing, compliance, payroll, everything at corporate, including liability. Um, I will hold that. I will contribute my TLC business model. I will contribute the support of corporate and other branch owners um, in your execution of that business model and the building of your branch. Uh, other team leaders and builders in the ERS system, because we're a franchise system, not a franchise, they will place agents in your office. Let me stop there, because that's critical. In any other system, whether it be Century 21, Caldwell Banker, um, you're not going to get a broker owner from down the street or across town putting an agent into your office. That will never happen. Uh, it's almost laughable. In ERS, that's commonplace. Um, I have, as a branch owner, I have uh, over 40 agents in this office uh, on the real estate side and mortgage side combined. We have insurance team growing, commercial finance team, um, and uh, the insurance side includes uh, life agents, PNC agents, and health agents as we're growing that portion right now too. So not all of them were hired by myself or my wife. There are other leaders and builders in the company from other territories, other cities, other areas um, who have put agents in my office to build their team in this area, if that makes sense to you. So as a broker, owner with another system, you're not going to get that support and that assistance. You solely and exclusively will be building your office. Uh, in the ERA system, um, you have plenty of help and support in doing that. You just basically um, run your branch, pay your bills, um, and you get compensated very nicely. So let me do this last demonstration or illustration. So at ERS, it's fair to say that there are three pieces of the pie for every transaction that closes. Again, I'm speaking uh, from a perspective of real estate today, but this does travel across the borders of the other industries that we partake in, insurance, mortgage, commercial finance, um, and, and home services as well because that's the way our compensation system works. So there are three pieces of the pie and without telling you or identifying it, I actually illustrated that for you previously. If you can recall, right about in this area, we talked about the overhead. That 20% carve-out right off the top of gross commission income of GCI that goes to the branch owner for overhead reimbursement. As I showed you, the $1,200 portion for that hypothetical example, or that 40% that was right about here, after that first split down to the adjusted gross income one, we got to the bonus pool, and that was a 40% total, and then you're going to get your percentage of that as a builder or a recruiter, as a team leader, based on your position in our hierarchy, you would get 50% of that 40%, or the $1,200 hypothetically, 60%, 70%, 80% of it, 30%, whatever is appropriate for your position. The last part of the pie was down here, was detailed right about here, and that was the branch profit, if you can recall. Branch profit. And again, that was 20%. So that's the third piece of the pie. So let me illustrate. As a builder in our company, which is the, the wonderful and unique opportunity at ERS, that we give everybody the ability to build a team and earn a residual passive income in a real viable business by having licensees out there in the marketplace conducting their licensed activities whereby as a builder you get compensated and override income as a result of their production. So as a builder, you're, you live here. You're going to get this piece of the pie here every time. Anytime a team member or anyone in the agent or sales associate or representative in your downline closes a transaction, you're going to earn your due override uh, on that transaction every time. As a branch owner, 
you're always, always going to get two pieces of the pie minimum. You're going to get that overhead carve out, that 20% right off the top of gross company dollar. You're going to get branch profit, that other 20% figure after the split of the second adjusted gross income with corporate. If you recall the numbers, it was the $1,200 split in half, $600 went to the branch owner, $600 went to corporate. I know it's not there anymore, I'm pointing to it opening to uh, motivate your recall. So that's these two pieces of pie. However, if you're as a branch owner, obviously you're building your branch. As I said, in, unique, in our unique system, other leaders and builders are putting agents into your office, um, but you're also building your office as well. So if that agent, if you can recall, it was Agent Bob, if Agent Bob was directly recruited by you or recruited by someone direct to you in your downline, so if Agent Bob is in your downline, then you're also going to get this piece of the pie. So as an owner, you have the opportunity on every transaction, potentially, to earn three pieces of the pie. You're always going to get minimally the two, but you have the opportunity to earn all three. That is the added caveat of being a branch owner in the ERA system, is that we have this system, and that as a branch owner, you have the superior ability to maximize your earnings from this comp plan. And I hope that makes sense. So, uh, as again, as I said, speaking directly, I hope to prospective branch owners uh, who want to come into our system and, and build a branch in, in a different area, open up a territory for us perhaps, um, as we're looking to grow. We're, we're entertaining um, applications from branch owners right now, and it's as simple as having a conversation um, with myself or uh, your team leader or the person that introduced you to the company. Um, we do grow from within, so we have people who joined us as a builder um, who have built a big enough team and decided, hey, I want to open a branch. Um, so it's a different understanding of the comp system for them, so I'm speaking to, to them as well, um, those folks as well, because you've been compensated all this time as you've been building your team at ERS as a builder, and you've been living in the bonus pool area. Now I'm explaining to you uh, the difference in how your, comps, your, your compensation gets elevated um, by becoming a branch owner, and you have a full understanding, hopefully, after this brief demonstration. So with that, I will say uh, good afternoon. Uh, if you have questions, please do not hesitate to contact me, or as I said, your team leader, if you're in the company, if you're a prospective uh, branch owner, uh, we sure would love to have you sit down and chat and talk about the possibilities of you becoming our next and newest branch owner in the system. Contact the person that introduced you to this video, um, and let's arrange a chat. Thank you.